This podcast is brought to you by Takata Geosynthetics, the global leader in progressive geosynthetic solutions for today's challenging infrastructure needs. Learn more about Tenkata Geosynthetics, including Tenkata Mirify, Tenkata MirGrid, and Tenkata Geotube at Mirify.com. Welcome to Geosynthetica's GeoTalk podcast, where we discuss geosynthetics and affiliated issues in civil and geotechnical engineering. I'm Chris Kelsey, editor of Geosynthetica.net. New materials enter the field in many ways. We frequently write about this on Geosynthetica, though the majority of these types of stories tend to focus on situations in which academic research hits upon a marketable idea, where R&D specialists inside of a manufacturing group combine field knowledge with manufacturing capabilities and come up with a new idea. This week, we want to look at a different angle when the field itself brings the problem to a company and challenges that company to solve it. Mark Sikama of Tankata Geosynthetics talked to us about how conversation with the Alaska Department of Transportation led the company to develop an enhanced wicking geotextile. My guest today is Mark Sikama. He is an engineer based in the Pacific Northwest. He works with Tenkata, which is one of the leading manufacturers in the world for geosynthetics. And I want to talk to you about the evolution of some geotextile materials because you've you've developed a material, the Mirify H2RI, that has pretty significant wicking properties, which is unique. In the, for geotextiles, which have traditionally just been used for you know, very vertically, vertically oriented drainage and filtration and soil separation. And we get a little more with this wicking. You know. um, what started the, the need for this? How did, how did this product come about? We had a meeting with the Alaska DOT, and they presented a problem to us that they experience a lot of frost heaves, and frost heaves occur when water forms an ice lens uh, under air field or pavement and then uh, creates a problem. And so if they can draw that water out, uh, you prevent the ice lens or mitigate it. Mm-hmm. So they presented a very simple problem to us, uh, much more difficult in the design, but they said, we would like you to just wick water out of a fine-grained soil if you could do that for us, you would solve a lot of problems. And that was pretty much the start of this evolution that we've been under. So uh, brought in smarter folks that understood this and uh, found a, uh, a yarn that acts as a capillary transport for water. And since it moves in a capillary fashion versus gravity, uh, it does have some uphill qualities as well, so uh, it's not governed by the direction you slope it. It can jump over small uh, obstacles. So this this is developed for frost heave applications, but is it being utilized in other ways? Now? Yes. Uh, it, we first thought that it would take off in the frost heave area. In fact, you'll see, uh, if you look up any of our brochures, it'll say Wick the Wild, and it's very frost heave centric. Uh, I would probably estimate maybe only 20% of our projects are related to frost heave. Uh, engineers have adopted this for enhanced lateral drainage when they're trying to deal with water issues. Mm-hmm. So whether it be surficial water infiltrating from the top or water seeping in from underneath causing problems in their pavements, uh, they are adapting this and as they learn more with this product, uh, the bulk of our products seem to be more towards that yeah. that aren't frosty. Yeah. What now Geosynthetics magazine had an article by you that uh, won an award uh, so that could perhaps give us some specifics about how this this material is functioning can you can you tell me a bit about that that was a fantastic project that was co-authored with uh, uh, Jim Carpita engineer from uh, Beaverhead County uh, is now retired 
and they had a problem up on the uh, Pioneer Mountains, and it, this was frosty related. Uh, it, the, the road was tearing the road apart, and every season they would uh, remove the snow because it would close seasonally for the winter, mm-hmm. and they would find these large longitudinal cracks, and they were so big a, a tire could drop down into them, and the road would literally just open up almost like uh, uh, tectonic plates shifting. And it was due to frost heave. Also, uh, they had a, a high water table. So the traditional solution was to go in and just dig out all that bad material. Mm-hmm. Uh, the county did not have a lot of money to spend, and they also didn't want to dig into the water table, creating a bathtub, because the soil just got weaker and weaker. Uh, bedrock was too far down. So uh, several solutions were presented. This was a federal highways-funded project. So we were working with their engineers and uh, came up with different alternatives that the county selected. Mm -hmm. And the one they selected was the thinnest section uh, possible, but it had the wick about one foot above the high water line. Mm. So, yeah, the project went in, and uh, we didn't finish the project during uh, the winter months because it snowed, so they'd shut it down. But when we came back in spring, and they only had one layer of sub-base material over it, uh, there wasn't any cracking, any movement, and we knew we were on to something because yeah. we hadn't finished the road. And the road's been in for coming up on four seasons now. Uh, no cracks, no changes in movements, and uh, you can visually see the water wicking to the edge. And once the, the ice thaws, it's yeah. constant. And we did put a motion, uh, a stop camera, on the site during snow melt and we we photographed the site for about four months and you can see the wicking kicking in the minute yeah. the snow melts yeah. and it's uh, definitely having an effect on the road and one of the reasons we know that it's working so well is they had fixed the road before mm-hmm. using traditional high strength reinforced products in fact one of our products made it in there they used traditional french drains uh, they used a PET they also used a subgrade geotextile uh, a lot of geo came out of that when they dug the road back up. Their fix yeah. back in 2006 and 2007 didn't last one season. Mother Nature just shredded. Uh, and so it really had nothing to do with the reinforcement qualities. This product does have a reinforcement uh, ability to it, which is good. allows us to get a thinner section, but yeah. we we are handling the water and uh, getting it out of there. But the wicking is really, that's, the, that's what's killing it. Kata Geosynthetics is the manufacturer of Murify H2RI. This is a revolutionary new geosynthetic that wicks water laterally, reducing the moisture content of the surrounding soils and aggregates. The reduction in moisture content in the road section increases your pavement life. Both subgrade resilient modulus and time to drain greatly benefit from lateral wicking along with its reinforcement values. Discover the benefit of Murify H2RI delivered by visiting Murify.com. can we expect to see this go now? I mean, you had indicated that far more, you know, applications are taking this in than just frost So what, what else are we going to be doing with this technology? We've had, uh, uh, engineers have adapted this into a variety of projects. We had, uh, uh, well, Frosty, we had rail, uh, Union Pacific put this in a rail line for the first time. Uh, so that's a groundbreaking DOTs have uh, uh, used this, particularly in Alaska, uh, and we've had uh, we had one engineer use it for uh, reducing the hydrostatic pressure of dam. Now we didn't have any data to give that engineer, but to, I guess to quote him, it's like, well, if I'm going to put something in, I'm I'm going to get something better than just putting in a standard geosynthetic. Yeah. Yeah. If it's going to draw water out, I'm buying. Uh, extra strength out of the soil that's around it. So for every percentage point reduction in moisture content, your shear strength goes up. Mm -hmm. And geotech engineers know this, so uh, they see this even without a lot of data. But to better answer your question, the uh, universities that have uh, jumped in and started researching this are showing not only a reduction of moisture of the material that sits on top of it, but also a reduction in the moisture content of the subgrade below it. 
which is huge. And it's it's more than just you know half an inch. Uh, they're showing uh, a decrease uh, down, so we're we're drawing the water off and. Uh, and for pavement designers, this is a big deal because if they can uh, increase the drainage coefficient, and talking like an Astro 93 pavement design, or uh, increase that A sub I via compaction, and we're seeing that, the pavement life goes up. So uh, this is another way to extend pavement life by controlling the moisture. And that's, uh, I think, probably the biggest direction. As engineers see this, uh, we will we'll see a much uh, larger use of the product. That is fascinating stuff. Um, congratulations on the article award. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing more about this. Will do. Thanks for your time, Mark. Mark Sikina works for Tenkata Geosynthetics. Learn more about Tenkata's geosynthetic materials and engineering experience at www.tenkata.com. You can also find a lot more about the wicking geosynthetics, their applications, various case studies, and more at mirify.com. M-I-R-A-F-I. As always, we've got more resources for you in our podcast article. Visit www.geosynthetica.net and click on the media tab. Thank you for listening.